excuse the quality of this tutorial, I'm using my laptop currently, but in this tutorial, I teach you how to animate in Roblox Studio. It's really basic, but I will make another part in the future. Enjoy everybody. Hey there everybody. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can start animating in Roblox Studio. People asked for this in the last tutorial. I wanted to make this one a building tutorial, but it seems like a lot of people really want to learn how to animate. So I'm going to do it in this video. This video won't be too complex. It's going to take a little bit of time to learn, but there is a learning curve with the animation plugin. Now Roblox has a animation plugin that they made. And there's also an animation plugin that I'm going to link down below. There's two animation plugins you can use, but we're going to use the old school one because the new school one that Roblox recently released is a little bit glitchy, a little bit iffy. I don't recommend learning from that for now. Make sure you learn from the old one first. That way you can get the basics down, all the other things and stuff like that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and use the plugin. We're gonna go to our plugins folder. Now, if you wanna get the plugin that I'm using, Legacy Animations, not the normal animations, that's the Roblox version. This is Legacy Animations. Once you have this, you go to Rig Builder, then you press on the R15 side or the R6 side. R6 is basically stuff like this, where it's like the basic Robloxian. Then if you go to the R15 side, this is the basic Robloxian for R15. So there's a difference, but you can kind of tell what it is when you look at it. They have different mesh versions too, like the female body. We also have the male body, which is a male rig, basically. There's the R15 and non-R15 version too, I believe. We also have the mesh rig, which is the Roblox 2.0 rig, which all of them are pretty good you know, anyways. Now, if you were to go ahead and go to R6 and do the same thing for R6, notice how it's the exact same thing. It's just the limbs have no bendy parts to them. They're all within the same part. They're all within the same thing, so they do not have an R15 animation with it. Now, R15 and R6, I'll show you exactly what I mean, the difference between them. So we're gonna go ahead and re insert a normal block rig. Then we're going to insert a R6 block rig. Reason being, there's a difference between the two. Now, if I were to take this one and rotate this one by pressing R while holding it, I can go ahead and I can see both of these. They look pretty different. This one looks like I could animate it more, be more detailed. This one looks like it's a little bit less detailed, but that's actually a conspiracy that's not true. When it comes to animating, it's going to be as detailed as you make it. So always try to make it as detailed as possible. Now, the next thing you want to do, go ahead and click on this button, the animation editor button, and you click on the stomach or the torso of the object you want to animate. Now, when it comes to this, I'm going to show you the R6 dummy for now. So we're going to go ahead and move the R6 dummy over here. And we're going to click on the animation editor, click on that, and then click select. And that's going to let us start up our animation. I'm going to go ahead and close this piece first. And look at this. We have a little animation thing. Now, if I were to click on anything, it has that little rotation part. And that is basically where you rotate around like this, correct? Now, if I were to go ahead and go to file the new, that lets me undo everything, which is very good. Now, what I'm going to teach you first is I'm going to teach you all the, like, basically the movement and the rotation key downs. Then I'm going to teach you all the file commands, a little bit about the edit commands, and nothing about settings really. Settings isn't really something that I use to be honest. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when it comes to the animation plugin, guys, I'm a little bit tired. I'm using my laptop, by the way. So there's not going to be that much edits in this video because I really want to get a video out. And there's not going to be a Nindo RP or an NL2 video today, guys. And not a Nindo either. There's not going to be any Naruto videos out today because I wasn't able to record because my laptop is what I'm using right now. So when you're clicking on, let's say I click on the arm, I want to animate the arm. If I press Y, it basically lets me rotate around different axes. Like notice how it does this. But if I were to press Y again, it lets me rotate around the local. So you can tell there's a difference between them on the global and the local. There is a difference. You just can't see it right there. But if I were to press R, then press T. T lets me move it by 0.2 increments. T again lets me move it by one increment. Then T lets me move it freely with no increments whatsoever. And I taught you what increments were in the first tutorial and in the fourth tutorial, I believe as well. So make sure you guys get ready for those. Watch those tutorials and understand them. Let's get back to this. Now, if you were to click on the three dots, you can input any increment you want or interval you want. So if I want to rotate it maybe by like 55 degrees, I can press OK and I can move it over by 55 like so. Notice how it looks kind of weird. So we're gonna go ahead and press new, file new and redo everything. That basically resets everything that we have. If I were to go to file and play, it would play my animation. New makes it a new animation. Load opens anything you saved into this and to save anything into here, you go to save. That's pretty much it. You just name it and then you save it. That's gonna be like in that list of objects when you load it. Import is to take an animation from your current library. So if I go over here, my other monitor, if I go over here, I have a lot of inf like animations that I can import. And if I were to go over here, I can export an animation over either to my inventory or to a group inventory. And it works out pretty well for everybody. Now, if I were to go to file and then help, it teaches me basically things I don't know. That's a pretty good way to learn some stuff too. Now, when it comes to this, what I recommend doing first is also learn the editing procedures, guys. Insert keyframe lets you insert like a blank keyframe. So notice how if I do this, it inserts like a blank keyframe. Nothing changes there. And you'll, you'll understand that later on in the video. Pasting lets me do this. So I can press this, click on that little three dots that's purple, then press copy. 
then if I were to click on edit and paste, it would move it over to that digit or that increment, which is good for us. Now you can also press V to move it by doing this, copy, then pressing V, and it copies it for you. Now, I don't believe there's any copy commands whatsoever when it comes to this plugin, so you're gonna have to just manually copy it by clicking it every single time. You can undo, and you can also redo. You can change the length of the animation, which is very useful to be honest. And right now it's set to one. If I were to make it five, it would make this animation five seconds long. And then if you were to go to the add time at cursor, it's not really something I use. Remove time at cursor isn't really something I use either. Set looping. Looping basically makes it so your animation keeps playing, like keeps restarting every time it finishes. If it's false, it doesn't restart. If it's true, it does restart. Set priority is really important. So when you set it to core, it means it's the lowest priority. If you set it to idle, it means if the player is standing still, it will play. If you set it to movement, when the player is moving, it'll move. And if you set it to action, it'll go over anything. So let's say I did slash E like sit. That is mainly like an idle command or a movement command, mainly because when you start moving, your sit command starts getting rid of, like it gets rid of the sit command, so you're no longer sitting. That means it's an idle command. It's kind of confusing, but you'll understand it if you were to play a Roblox game. Like you say slash E sit or slash E cheer or something like that, slash E cheer, and you move. That's the movement right there because as you move with the cheer, your character doesn't stop doing the cheer. That means the movement is overrided by the animation. That's basically what this is. It's saying, when do we override your animation? Tell us here and it tells you the basic information of when it can override stuff now we're going to go ahead and start animating by go ahead and going to the new option and making a new one we're going to go ahead and go and try to make maybe like a let's see like a flip how about that if we're going to make a flip animation let's make one second long now when it comes to r6 all you really have to do is make sure you have the right increments and everything like that it's not that difficult to get the right increments you just got to be careful with what you do so if i were to press y remember that's the local and global axis so notice how this is local but if I were to rotate this by pressing R and rotate it like this, I can move it locally like this and move it up like that, right? That's local because it's following the axes of the torso. But if I were to press Y and go global, I can't move it like in that angle like I did before. So that's what global is, everybody. Pressing R lets you switch between movement and rotation. Pressing T lets you switch between your increments, which is 3.2 and 1, which you can also change by going to your three dots. But if you're doing the rotation, it's 10 degrees, 45 degrees, and no degrees whatsoever. It's free. That's basically all the movement capabilities you need to know. Now, when it comes to an animation, what I recommend doing, whenever you start an animation, try to make it so your player isn't like bending down. Let's say if I want to make him flip, right? Well, let's not make our player go like this. I'm gonna move it over. This is the first frame. So this is like the frame that the player is gonna be starting in. When the player starts, they're gonna look like this. What I recommend doing is not this. Don't make it so your player looks like this in the beginning. Don't make it so they're bending down, getting ready to jump. Make it so when your player is not, don't make them like this, like they're going to go up, then they're going to go up like this, then they're going to flip in the animation. Don't do that. Do this. Instead of making it so they start bending their knee and then jumping, make it so they already are in the air flipping. Because when Roblox loads the animation, it's going to be very, very good looking when you do that stuff. Because I've got experience with a lot of stuff where like the animations didn't look that good, if not for like the fact that I started it like that. But because I learned from that mistake, my animations look much, much better because I don't make them start like that. Now, when you're animating, try to make it feel like a real move, like lifelike body. So try to make the legs move a little bit. Try to make them free, make them look like they're flopping a little bit. That way it looks more realistic in my opinion. And when it comes to flipping animations, that's what I honestly recommend. There's not really much you can know about flipping animations other than that. It's not really that complex to learn either. When it comes to animations, it's like making a GIF or like a slideshow. When it comes to like animated slideshows, you always want to make sure your animated slideshows work coherently and they also go at a certain rate. That way the player or whoever's watching it or using it understands the like the speed. It's not too slow. It's not too fast and so on. So just make sure when you do that stuff, it's all Gucci for you guys, because when it comes to animations, you got to make it smooth. If it's not smooth, no one's going to hire you to be their animator. No one's going to want you to animate for them. So you got to make sure you keep practicing because one tutorial like this isn't enough to teach you how to animate a flip one tutorial is going to teach you a little bit like the basics but it's not going to teach you everything you need to know now notice how i'm speaking while i'm doing this and that's because i don't really have to teach you all you need to know is the basic stuff and this right here the zero the point one the point two this is all the seconds in the animation or the milliseconds or like the half seconds all the decimals in the animation within it so this is half the animation 0.5 and so on this is a quarter 0.25 and so on you know now as i go i remember i have to keep on animating it like this everybody so we're going to go ahead and move this to be 0.5 Move this to be 0.25 and then we're going to take the 0.75. We're going to copy this over and press V and move it over here. Now I'm going to take this and rotate this down. That way it looks like this. Now this animation is going to look a little bit weird because similar to our last video, 
animations are always going to look strange guys they're always they're always going to bend over look weird and stuff like that there's going to have glitches and everything like that limbs aren't going to be the way they should be all that stuff so to make sure when you're animating just be careful because you're going to make a lot of mistakes you're going to have to learn as you go and a tutorial isn't really going to teach you everything but it does teach you all the basic keys you need to know for animating just know that now if you click the plus right here this lets you zoom in closer and closer to see the increments and stuff like that and that's not really that important unless you're using it this lets you like move it down more just in case you have more stuff like you could have like a monster that you're animating you could have the wings the the claw the other claw the fingers the hand and stuff like that so that's just where it gets complex and stuff like that it's really cool to be honest makes it a lot easier to animate i don't know why this isn't going up please go up please go up there we go okay now if i were to play this animation it's not going to look that good but it looks okay notice how it does that it's a little bit slow and that's because at certain places like this it shouldn't be slow so what i want to do is i'm going to move this over to be 0.4 and move this over to be about 0.6 and notice how when i play it it's going to look a lot better like that and it kind of looks like i'm kicking somebody in the air which is pretty cool too it's kind of looking for a flip but we want for something better in my opinion well that's basically animations guys this tutorial is going to be short because it's mainly about you taking the initiative and learning yourself. I taught you all the keys. I taught you it a little bit in a confusing way, but make sure you guys learn the keys and everything. Links to the plugins are down below. This flip was not that difficult to animate. And remember to speed it up. All you have to do is change the length like so. We can make it maybe 0.75 instead of 1. Then we have to move these intervals to make it seem more smooth and streamlined. Now notice how when I move it like this, it's going to look a lot better because the animation's shorter. And it looks pretty cool too. We're going to move these over just a little bit, guys. With this tutorial, honestly, it wasn't that difficult to make, but it might be a little bit difficult to follow, and I acknowledge that. Just make sure when you're animating, guys, you understand exactly what's going on. You followed my steps, you followed my procedure. And if you think this tutorial is confusing, do not worry. I'll make another animation tutorial again in the future. That way you guys can understand it just a little bit more alongside maybe another tutorial for particle emitters and stuff like that because I haven't really explained those too much. So I'll try my best to make another tutorial on those. But if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. Also subscribe if you're new. Join the Rope Bros today. Till then, it's been your man Robo. Remember, I'm not doing an NO2 video today. Signing out now. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's live stream and in the next tutorial, everybody. Peace, guys.